Uh, good morning from Iceland. I am at Diamond Beach and there's no diamonds. I have never in my entire life come here and that's been the case. I think it's just been extremely cold in Iceland this winter, maybe, that's my guess. And the channel that comes down from the Glacier Lagoon transporting icebergs, diamonds, is clogged up. So, um, yeah, gonna have to be a little bit creative with the photography this morning. I knew something was odd when the parking lot at Diamond Beach wasn't packed for sunrise. It's so strange coming to this place and it's not packed with spectators and photographers. But I still wanted to make the most of the location, ice or not. I just got hit pretty good with the wave. Uh, water definitely came over the camera, but everything seems okay. I'm uh, basically down on the black sand here with a rock and just hoping that a wave will come up and roll into it. And then using like a half second shutter speed, I'm just playing with long exposures, essentially. Just trying to capture a cool moment where I don't know, something happens to give some mood and drama to the scene. I'd love for this rock to, for example, catch a wave and for that wave to lead around through the image to the mountains uh, in the background, even though the background is pretty subtle, or even just some water trailing backwards behind it. So basically, when a wave comes up, I've got the shutter on continuous and I'm just taking photo, photo, photo hoping to capture that moment and hopefully it works out. Just a quick tip, when you're on a beach like this, you really have to press your tripod deep into the sand or else when the water comes up, your tripod will sink and you won't get sharp images. In the end, I did get an image, maybe even two. Okay, potentially I think there might be an image there if the wave didn't uh, make the shot too unsharp. I think maybe even there's two images there. We'll see, but uh, that kind of worked out. I uh, am seeing off in the distance mountains way off on the horizon. I didn't bring my 100 to 400 on this trip, but I am thinking that maybe I'll see if my 70 to 200 is enough lens to maybe get some of these waves rolling in the foreground of the mountains that are kind of subtly in the background. I don't know if that'll work, but I'm gonna try. So 200 millimeters, I'm gonna play around at about a quarter second and hopefully catch a cool moment. The waves here on Diamond Beach were a bit erratic, and the light on the mountains didn't stick around all too long. But this is what I did come up with. So that didn't uh, work out as planned. Uh, I think maybe the rock photo, the longer exposures, maybe worked but the long lens shot just didn't work. I didn't have enough lens, I don't think, and the mountain probably isn't out enough for the photo to really work. Um, yeah, not a disappointing morning, but a challenging morning. It's just sad not to have diamonds on Diamond Beach. So, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of, actually, I do know what's gonna happen the rest of the day. We're gonna go look for an ice cave. In the afternoon, we hopped into a massive Mercedes Sprinter, kitted out with tires and a lift kit that could basically take us anywhere. Our goal is to end up at an ice cave. This particular one is apparently really unique. It's narrow and composed mostly of black ice. cave hiking I got some crampons on and it's super windy but <laughs> I'm hoping it's not that windy inside the cave uh, we are doing like the late afternoon ice cave so 
it's already 4 p.m. and we're gonna be here until sunset. So hopefully it's pretty quiet because these ice caves can be really busy, full of tourists and other photographers. So this is a new one for me. Ice caves are constantly evolving, usually formed by a combination of water and wind erosion. Ice caves aren't permanent. Between the flows of ice, the receding nature of the ice, and erosion in general, ice caves usually only last two or three years. It makes it fun. Basically, every year a new location appears. Okay, so we're at the one of the tunnels. This is very, very black ice, and I'm gonna walk you through really quick, but it kind of reminds me of Canyon X at uh, Antelope Canyon. It's just this really narrow, winding, twisting bit of canyon that gets more and more narrowed and more filled with my photography group. I'm just like chasing them out of here, it's awesome. And then you kind of duck down through a tunnel, you squeeze through like this, and there's lots of spots in this ice cave or ice tunnel <laughs> that are like this. You literally have to lay down as you turn around. But it is awesome. It's uh, good for photography. Maybe not so much shooting up and down the alleys like you get at Antelope Canyon, but straight up. There are so many really cool abstract images here. And uh, this is just one of two or three little caves or tunnels we're gonna go into, so. From a photography perspective, this isn't your classic ice cave photo from Iceland. This particular cave is just too narrow for that type of photo. Instead, I'm focused on the details, the patterns, and the shape of the ice. Often, the best image is looking straight up. We hiked out of the Black Ice Cave and popped across to another section of open ice. This one, a little bit more classically blue. Okay, Cave 1 was a success. Uh, narrow? I don't know how the photos came out. There, it's one of those things I'll have to see post-processing. We were only in for about 15, 20 minutes or so. So hopefully they came out cool. And we're gonna go into now another cave that I think will have more traditional looking ice cave images to be had. So let's drop down into this one. Well, I didn't find too many classic ice cave photos here, nor was that really what I wanted. I did find a bunch of awesome abstract images. This one, for example, of the curves of the ice. Then I found some icicles with a beautiful blue backdrop. In my opinion, this was an ice cave success. We left the caves as the sun set and the wind started to stretch from heavy to downright violent. It was time to call it a day. But in the morning, we were back at it. Uh, ice caves were fun yesterday. The wind got crazy last night, but it seems to have died down and uh, potentially left us with some decent light this morning. Maybe, although it's cloudy that way. Anyways, distracted. Because Diamond Beach has no diamonds this year, and about that, the guide yesterday said that they had the coldest December in about 100 years, and the lagoon just froze entirely and no ice could get through to the beach and hasn't gone through all winter. So there hasn't been diamonds on Diamond Beach all winter. But because Diamond Beach is uh, diamondless, it's, it's kind of nice because now we're exploring somewhere I normally wouldn't go with the photo group. 
And basically that's just the Glacier Lagoon, but from a different point of entry, rather than back at the normal spot. We're a little bit back down the road. Being a photography tour leader is a bit of a blessing and a curse. Yes, you get the opportunity to photograph these incredible places so many times that you get really good images. But you can also get a little bit bored with them. So it's nice on this trip to explore a couple other potential locations too. The view up here is awesome. And I'm having the battle I tend to have with myself quite a bit in landscape photography in that when I come to an awesome vista like this, the views are epic and I never take this photo because it feels too easy. It seems too easy. And it's not to say that there's not a great photo here. There's beautiful S curving lines, but it feels too easy. And sometimes I kind of get trapped in this mindset of because it's an easy photo, it's not a great photo. So now I'm thinking, do I scramble to the bottom where there's ice cracking on the shore, could make a really cool foreground, or I don't know, find something a little bit harder. And I'm, I'm in this little bit of a battle and there's only about 15 minutes until sunrise. My brain saying stay up here, my heart saying scramble down to the bottom, then panic. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna scramble down and panic. When I got down to the shores though, I found a bit of a problem. In landscape photography, getting low sometimes makes landscapes flatter. Being higher stretches the landscape through your frame more. Down here, the mountains feel small and the image feels less impressive. I should have trusted my head. As soon as you get down low like this, in places like this, you lose some depth because the peaks aren't big enough or close enough to you. And because of that, everything looks flat. It's in a thin part of the frame. So by going higher, by getting elevated, you can fill more of the frame vertically with stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna run back up this hill. At the top of the hill, the light went off, but it was also one of those kind of mornings I just didn't feel like I loved any of the compositions. They all felt, well, too easy. The S-curved shoreline is maybe my only keeper from what was otherwise a brilliant morning. Mornings don't get much better than this. This was absolutely awesome. Seals in the water, pink glowing light, really beautiful skies, no wind, just absolutely awesome. So uh, I'm gonna end it there and I'll see you on the next video as we head farther east here in Iceland. Peace.